Hey guys, it's Josh from the Review Brothers here, and today we're going to be doing a Don't Breathe Solo review. Now this film is an interesting thriller concept and unique concept and a different twist on the home invasion and horror film genre and I think it's absolutely great. It was a great film. It was thrilling, chilling, and popcorn spilling. Quite honestly, this film had me in shivers, in chills, and it was terrifying. More terrifying than any modern day horror I've seen in a very long time. And this is done by Fed Alvarez, one of my favorite horror directors. He did the Evil Dead remake. Absolutely love that film. But dare I say I enjoyed this even more than that. And that just shows a testament to how great this guy is as a director. Fed Alvarez can make a great film like the Evil Dead remake and make an even better one in Don't Breathe. This film, Don't Breathe, will have you just sitting on the edge of your seat. And you aren't supposed to care about these characters, but you do. You care about these characters, and these characters are robbers. Three teenage robbers, this is the story. Three teenage robbers go to rob a blind man's house because they think it's an easy job. $300,000 is in the house, and Daniel Zalvato, play, Daniel Zalvato plays the character Money. Dylan Minmite plays Alex. And Jane, Jane Levy plays Rocky. These are your three teens. These are the three people breaking into the blind man's house. They're clueless, they're reckless, they're thieves. They're, and Rocky doesn't want to do it, but she has to, to help her sister get out of Detroit and help bring her a better life. So they all do it. They stalk out the house, they get ready to do the job, and once they get in the house, they think it's easy peasy. But no, the man is in the house, and they think it's an easy job. But they did not expect him to lock up his belongings. I don't know why they didn't expect that. But they didn't. And they brought a Beretta. And you know what? He sh Money shoots out the door. So you know what that means? It's fair game. He They shot in his house, which gives him legal right to shoot back. Here we go. This is the beginning of your film. He's, he wakes up. He goes... Who's there? Who's there? He didn't say it like that. I can't do the voice. Who's there? Who's there? And he's the blind man. He's like, and money is just, he's like trying to pull the trigger, but he just can't. And then the man turns the gun, takes the gun, and he points it. This was in the trailer. And he shoots money. And these two just are speechless. Good thing, because he can hear you when you breathe. And this is where the concept gets so interesting. A blind, you, they rob the blind man's house. What many people don't know about a blind person is just because their sight is bad doesn't mean their other senses don't work and their other senses do work. And I'm going to tell you why. Their senses work perfectly. In so much in sync. I'm being quite honest here, okay? Their senses work perfectly. Absolutely 100% perfectly. And the thing about it, sorry, we had to move uh, camera angles. And the thing about this is, they move just so perfectly. The camera work is surreal and the timing is done so perfectly. It's all just perfect for the most part. Everything's well done to a T. Surreal and visual stunning camera work. Angles that'll make your heart that make your heart jump. No jump scares for the most part, except maybe two in the whole film. And I love it when there's not jump scares and there's just real tension that's causing you to get scared. This film does it so perfectly in so many ways, and I just think that Don't Breathe is one of the best horror films of the modern era. It does so many great things for the genre. And it wears all of its pride and all of its tradition and all of its homages to films, horror films of yesteryear as a badge of horror honor. So these kids broke into his house. The blind man's after them. It's kind of an, a simple concept. And the fact that it's that simple is what makes it so 
surreal and so frigging intriguing. This concept isn't exactly going anywhere you think, but it just slaps the people that were skeptics in the face and says this was a great film. Again, the blind a blind man has the other senses working. He can move perfectly. If he can hear you, he can sense you about 10 times better. His strength is about 10 times the strength of any normal human. One thing, because I got sidetracked, one thing you have to know before you go into this film is that a blind person, ha most of the time, has 10 times, the has a strength of 10 times more in every other sense other than sight. So don't screw with a blind person. And these people think that that he, they're going to get out of this alive. <laughs> ah, that's funny. So these kids have broken into his house. The blind man is now after them. And this happens for the entirety of the film. The hundred, the, it's not 140 minutes. It's 88 minutes of pure terror. terror. It's terrifying. It's thrilling, chilling, and popcorn spilling. In the most epic and unique way. The way that the film is shot gives it a, a real surreal vibe that makes you feel like you're inside of this home. And the fact that they showed you all of the home before the film started with excruciating detail is absolutely terrifying in itself because they're showing you this because it's going to be used later on in the film against you. And you feel for the characters that are inside this house. But you also feel for the antagonist. The person trying to kill them. Because it shows throughout the film that he, yes, he's a horrible person. He's absolutely off his rocker. He's crazy. But he was a good person. And he changed. Because of what life did to him. And that's sad. And you don't expect that in a horror film. But you get it in this horror film. Don't Breathe throws emotional elements at you, t terrifying elements at you, comedic elements, small, very small comedic elements at you. And for horror fans, it's something for everyone, honestly. If you like jump scares, they're kind of there. If you like tons of tension, it's there. Don't Breathe will leave you breathless. Now let's go into my pros and cons for this film. The cinematography is absolutely breathtaking. Absolutely uniquely done. Well done. Surreal. Beautiful. Each frame is perfectly crafted in this web of absolute beauty. And the shots just cascade the screen with absolute terrifying imagery. And it's not from the a ghost. It's from a man who's lost everything. And in this film, these people are trying to take the one shred of that he has left of his former life. And he's going to do anything to protect it. So the story also is tremendous in its simplicity. And the soundtrack and score, musical composition and score for this film is absolutely brilliant, breathtaking, beautiful, blends so well together with the film. And the ending soundtrack just, comp and the soundtrack alone just brings the creepy vibe up to 10. And it will keep you chilled to the bone to the very end, from beginning to very end for the most part. Now, my cons for this film. Towards the end, it was the third act completely. It becomes too similar to Panic Room with Jodie Foster and People Under the Stairs with Wes Craven. And I don't, and I don't usually like when it's too similar. It wasn't too similar, and it wasn't, but it was a little bit too much similarity to where it's no longer a, a homage, and it feels kind of like copying some things from the film. And I don't like it when films try to copy that. And that's the only one small, minute detail that I didn't like about this film. Also, there's one last thing. The third act, by the third act, by the, we have two perfect acts in my opinion. Two absolutely breathtaking, 
tension-filled, terrifying acts of horror. And then by the third act, it becomes too cheesy and ridiculous to understand why it's still happening. Now, I'm going to spoil one thing, and this is why spoilers will be included. It will say that spoilers have been included because it's a very key element to the film. So if you don't want to be spoiled, get off this video. All right? I'm going to put it in the description. The blind man lost his daughter to this rich girl. And he kidnaps the rich girl, and he wants her to bear his child. So when he ends up accidentally killing the rich girl, when they're trying to free her, he uses Rocky instead. And this is how the film almost ended, and I thought it was going to end this way. You think that Alex, the character Alex, has died. You think, he, you think that he has. But that's not the case. Alex hasn't died. And Rocky has been captured by the blind man. And why? Because she's going to become the new person to bear his child. I know it's really screwed up. But it's a horror film, so what did you expect? So now, you think this is about to happen. And it's about to happen. She's screaming for her life. And then Alex comes in, saves the day, smashes him on the, he the blind man on the head with a hammer, handcuffs him, gets Rocky the hell out of there. They're about to get out of there. But the blind man... Survives that. He breaks out of the damn handcuffs and he shoots Alex dead. And, he, and then she runs out of that house as fast as possible. And she goes, you can't get me out here because it's morning. It's daytime now. And he, and he brings out the dog. And this is where it gets too cheesy and unrealistic for me. Towards the end. The dog is invincible, people. The dog is invincible. He jumps over a fence. He goes back around, up and down, through and through, back around. He gets caught in the trunk of the car. And then he friggin' barrels his way through that, almost killing her, until he drives her outside of the car and the blind man captures her again. Only to think that she's about to die. Nope, she gro grabs the crowbar that he left down there and starts bat playing a game of bash the blind man in the face. Bam, 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 bam. And he falls to his, what you think is his death, ten stories to the concrete basement floor. Blood spewing out of him. She runs out of the house and she grabs 300k and Rocky and her sister, Dee Dee, are off to California. And that should be it, right? wrong what is so ridiculous towards the end of this film and ruins some of it for me is the blind man survives all of this and they don't even and they she he hides the girl's the rich girl's body so they blame the two robbers not the three because rocky never got caught but the other two it was it he doesn't get charged no if it, you know what happened the two kids are blamed. The two robbers are blamed. Two teenagers shot up on a veteran's house and tried to rob him. That's the story. And they show a close-up of the man getting out of the hospital. And he and she is getting on a plane. This sets up a sequel. And the thing is, it should have just ended. It should have just ended because... The thing at the end of this film is, at the beginning of this film, you see a girl being dragged up a hill by the blind man. And then you see a panned version of the house throughout with excruciating detail of every little nook and cranny of the house as they put a close-up on the house and the inside of it. And they pan back to that shot at what you think is the end of the film, but they add another five minutes so they can have the sequel, the sequel um, filler in. To get the se to set up the sequel, in my opinion, you could have had a perfect horror film if he she ca if he captures her again, and she's being dragged because she's knocked out now by the blind man to the house, and the last shot would be the one that we opened up with, and it fades to black, and the credits would have rolled as he drags her to the house. If that's the way you ended the film, I would have given this film a 9 out of 10 popcorn. But overall, it ruins what could have been a perfect or near damn perfect film. And it becomes just a really great film. 
but it can't get a near perfect score from me or a perfect score because it decided to add that next five minutes to the film. But I still enjoyed Don't Breathe and for a perfect two acts of horror, of horror and thriller mixed together for a perfect blend of everything and surreal nature and a great film overall with a weak third act that by the end makes you wonder a what if they would have ended the five, before the five minutes. It's a film that starts off strong and ends off kind of dull. So in my opinion, guys, Don't Breathe, is, if you're a horror fan, is a great film to go see. Almost near perfect. And I definitely recommend it. In my opinion, better than Evil, the Evil Dead remake that Fed Alvarez did. And if you're a fan of Fed Alvarez or just really good horror, this is one of the best modern day representations of horror I've seen in a very long time. I'm giving this one an 8.5 out of 10 popcorns, guys. And I definitely recommend you check it out in theaters. Anyways, guys, this has been Josh from the Review Brothers here. And I want you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. And get ready for a straight-to-DVD soon. Peace.